<laughs> Today we're gonna try to write a timeless crime novel. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and today we are trying to combo off in Timeless with Crime Novelist. So Crime Novelist, one of the most exciting cards, or at least uncommons, from Murders at Karlov Manor, people are really intrigued by the possibility of using this card as a combo piece, and honestly, I have not seen it played like it all since it was printed, so I figured it's about time that that changed, and we should write a timeless crime novel. So Crime Novelist, it's a 3-minute one three. And it says, when you sack an artifact, put a counter on it and add a red mana. So how do we go infinite with this card? And technically we need like three-ish pieces. So step one, our most important non-crime novelist combo piece is animation module. So animation module, a one mana artifact that whenever one or more plus one plus one counters are put in a permanent we control, we can pay one to make a one one servo. And then we can pay three to add a counter to something. That's not really relevant. The main idea of this deck is we need crime novelist animation module and then the Friggy Sack Outlet, preferably Goblin Bombardment. And then we go infinite. The idea is we're able to sacrifice an artifact, which will trigger animation module to let us pay one to make a servo. We'll also get a counter on Crime Novelist and make a red mana. We can use the red mana from Crime Novelist to pay for animation module to make a servo, which is an artifact. And then we sack the servo to the Goblin Bombardment, which will start the loop over. We'll sacrifice an artifact to make a mana with Crime Novelist, which will also put a counter on it, which will trigger the animation module so we can pay the red mana to make another servo, do it again, do it again. If Goblin Bod Mardments are sack outlet, we just kill our opponent on the spot. We just keep sacrificing the servos until our opponent dies. We do have one Ashnod's Altar, which I guess makes infinite mana and makes an infinitely big crime novelist, although it doesn't directly win the game as good as Goblin Bod Mardments. So that's the main setup of the deck, although we do need one other piece of the puzzle. So I didn't really want to count this as a combo piece, but we do need an artifact on the battlefield to sacrifice to start the loop. In theory, we we could have animation module and also crime novelist and also goblin bod marmot on the battlefield and still not win the game so we have greedy freebooter and shambling gas these one drops that when they die they just make a treasure so in theory we find one of these we'll sacrifice them or we'll die in combat we can chump block leave the treasure on the battlefield and that treasure is what kicks off the infinite loop once we have our combo pieces to win the game the other upside of greedy freebooter and shambling gas is it works really well with our tutor package so we need three combo pieces and we need ways to find them. We can't just trust we're going to draw them naturally. So our big tutor is Diabolic Intent, which just lets us sacrifice a creature for two mana to tutor up anything. So we sack our greedy freebooter, shambling gas, find a combo piece. We also get our one demonic tutor. We have one gamble, which is a little risky, but it can tutor up any missing combo piece. Deadly Dispute can sack something to draw some cards. Otherwise, Lightning Bolt thought sees his interaction. Orcish Bowmasters, because it's pretty busted, and it's also good sacrifice fodder. Mana base, uh, Frexine Tower, the most notable land, just another way that we can ramp into our combo pieces a little faster otherwise pretty typical timeless stuff fetch land shock lands fast land to surveil land some basics in the sideboard blood moon to jank our opponent out since our deck can support it some removal sweepers roiling vortex to try to slow down show and tell ley line of the void for graveyard decks and that is crime novelist combo for timeless that's our deck for today so let's jump into some games and see if we can write that timeless crime novel thanks for watching everyone i hope you enjoyed it and i'll be back in a bit for the wrap up need some magic cards well you can snag them from our sponsor card kingdom over at cardkingdom.com slash mtg goldfish it is crime novelist combo time we are writing a timeless crime novel this week crime novelist definitely one of the most hype murders at Karlov banner cards have not seen it at all like literally not a single time since the set came out so curious to see if we can actually make it combo off in timeless plus we haven't played timeless in a minute and i really like timeless so i'm excited Ooh, excited to check in on the format well this hand is close we have the animation module we got the crime novelist so we really just need a sack outlet and then some sort of something like a artifact to get the loop started and we should be able to go infinite plus we have a Frexine tower which is nice to speed things up see what our opponent's up to wooded foothills jangatha a well ah zoo okay well at least we're not getting shown intelled greedy freebooter is actually pretty excellent so we still need the sack outlet but Greedy Freebooter can block for a turn and scry for the Sack Outlet. And once it dies, it leaves a treasure, which can start the, the infinite loop. 
The question's going to be, do we ooh, break out? What's the scariest hit? Probably Territorial Kavu. That's a 4-4. Four, four. Uh, do we block? The one way blocking hurts us is if... <laughs> We draw exactly Goblin Bombardment. If we draw exactly Goblin Bombardment with Phyrexian Tower, we have just enough mana, I think, that we could combo off. But the odds of that are not high. So I think we just get our treasure here. Get our treasure, get our scry. Soak up a little bit of damage. And do a little... <laughs> All right, that's fair. <laughs> oh, so it is... It is a Goblin Bombardment. Okay, so, I mean, this is still fine. I don't think they can kill us this turn. So let's just play Goblin Bombardment, play the Blood Crypt, pass the turn. Hopefully our opponent has no idea that we can go infinite. Yeah, so we got to combo one turn slower, but the odds of that being exactly Goblin Bombardment are so low. So we would prefer our opponent to tap out given the choice not really worried about this ragavan hit because there's not much in our deck that matters i don't think from our opponent's side well we are getting smacked five eight we're taking ten down to seven opponent unfortunately is going to get a treasure which means i guess they could have like leyline binding or a bolt well all right opponent steals an animation module probably not going to play that i wouldn't think come on opponent oh my god they why <laughs> doesn't even do anything in their deck okay well that's good for us and now it's time to write a crime novel uh crime novelist there's no way this can go wrong from here right so now we get to do the combo uh we need to sack the treasure which will make a man and get a counter to trigger the animation module use the mana to make a dork and then sack the servo which will trigger crime novelist to let us pay for the animation module. <laughs> and we can do this all day. And opponent scoops it up. And that was a pretty sweet and easy win. Okay, that went better than I expected. And now we get to bring in a bunch of blood moons, which blood moon against domain is so good. We could even, you know, I guess we could theoretically turn to it. It's not likely. We'd need, we'd need a dork on turn one and then Phyrexian Tower, but we'll just do a little trimming. Trim some tutors, trim some card draw, bring in the blood moons, bring in a little bit more removal. We want stuff, so our main deck removal is just Bolt, which is very good. Not good against Territorial Kavu though, so I think it's uh, worth bringing in some harder removal. Off to a good start. Now we gotta write the sequel to our crime novel, our bestseller. <laughs> Uh, this hand. This hand is actually pretty good if we hit our mana. We only need one land and we can Diabolic Intent too. Plus we have Crime Novelist and also, do we even Freeboot? I guess we do. We probably gotta get the Blood Crypt, unfortunately. Run out the Freebooter. I mean, plus Freebooter, once it blocks, will get us a mana. Yeah, so we're an animation module away from trying to combo off. And we have a tutor to find it, so it might not be, ooh. Brawler. Good thing we have a fatal push. Well, we're gonna miss our land drop here, but I guess we should bolt bolt the brawler because we can fatal push a Kavu, which we can't bolt. And we're gonna pass. We don't really want to get hit by a dash Bragavan. Or even like if they break out something, we probably just jump to get the treasure. We do kinda need some manas. Bonet, tap land passes. Alright, there's a land. On black, I guess. This is pretty good. This means we can turn Freebooter into a mana whenever we want to. We're still just gonna pass. All right, opponent. Orcish Bowmaster. Ooh, if they target our Freebooter, this goes pretty well for us. All right, so we get to sack the Freebooter to kill the Bowmaster, and this will fizzle the Orc army. Um, Bowmaster is really good, but I don't. I think we'd rather find mana or combo pieces because we're kind of close right like all we really need well tribal flames to the face down to 12. all we really need is the animation module opponent cracks Ooh, do they have double tribal flames that would actually be kind of scary our opponents had kind of a weird not wow just a tap land all right <laughs> hello blood moon well uh yeah we gotta spend our treasure but this seems worth it this also wrecks our mana but it gets our opponent way worse this is probably just game can domain actually uh, they can dash rog opponent scoops it up and okay <laughs> that actually went pretty well <laughs> oh crime novel combo achieved 
Let's just keep doing that. Not a lot of combo pieces, but that's in fine, right? We have the animation module, so that is a combo piece. Dragon Rage Channeler. Hopefully we can snipe that. Hopefully we can snipe that with a Bowmaster before it grows. If DRC becomes a 3-3, kind of annoying, because then we need a bull. I think we just get a Swamp. Run out the Shambling Ghast. Well, hopefully our opponent can't get four card types in the graveyard this turn. As long as we can kill the DRC. All right, we should be good. Wow, that is that is a weak expressive iteration. <laughs> the whole turn to expressive iteration, but it mills a blood moon. Yeah, that is, ill. That's when expressive, iter expressive iteration is so good, but when you automatically don't get to use the card you exile, I don't know if it's actually ever worth casting on turn two. Well, we are going to play Polluter Delta, crack Polluter Delta. This time, we're gonna grab, unfortunately, a Blood Crypt. It does hurt a bit, but we do need the red mana. And let's just snipe this DRC and be down time. <laughs> Get in there with the shambling gas. I mean, we have Crime Novelist, so we're actually not insanely far away from comboing. All right, there's, <laughs> I guess maybe our opponent had so many expressive iterations, they felt like they could waste one or, I don't know. The, the last expressive iteration is still very weird. So what do we need to go infinite? We need essentially the sack outlet. So probably, hopefully, Goblin Bombardment, but Ashnod's Altar would also do it. Opponent, XL's DRC, presumably found a land, untapped, DRC, sure, sure, sure. Well, that is a hand of action, isn't it? They did have just infinite expressive iterations. <sighs> treasure Cruise drawing three is a problem. Yeah, let's take the Treasure Cruise. So we don't really care about Blood Moon. Unholy Heat, I guess, is kind of annoying. Expressive Iteration, I kind of just want to take all the card draw. Let's just take all the card draw and try to limit our opponent's resources. Our opponent's down to 13. We have two of our three combo pieces. They probably have to Unholy Heat the Bowmaster at some point. I guess we could have taken the Unholy Heat and left them with the treasure cruise, but it's just so risky. All right, they're gonna kill the Bowmaster. It's just so risky once the Bowmaster dies. Our opponent getting to draw a million cards is not good. Our deck, our deck is a combo deck. It doesn't really have a way to refuel. We don't have treasure cruises. We don't have necros or anything. So we don't really have the ability to just like, oh, we're gonna draw a bunch of cards this turn. Our deck doesn't really do that. So if our opponent draws a ton of cards. That is a issue. Opponent hits us down to eight. Wow, I guess we did most of that to ourselves, didn't we? Double thought sees, some fetches. <laughs> it's like we haven't even taken an attack. <sighs> Seriously. Okay, I'm starting to believe the conspiracy theory. <laughs> the thought sees bug conspiracy. <laughs> Where your opponent always draws what you thought sees. So there's a spell pierce, so we can't actually play it this turn. Let's play the theater. Our surveil land in hand. Awkward. Oh, I don't know if we want to keep this or not. If we. Yeah, I guess we keep it. We have a token mean sack. We can't play the crime novelist. If we just go undisrupted, we combo off next turn and win. Our opponent did just top deck the treasure crew, so they could very well have drawn more removal. Treasure cruise. All right, there's a bolt and a surveil. Well, that's, that's worse. Now we need at least two turns to combo, and even that. Oh, another DRC, okay. Does not get in and hit us. Well, so if we, the problem is, so if we play Bombardment, they can Spell Pierce just to Surveil. They need to save their DRCs. If we can stick this Bombardment without our opponent growing the DRCs, then we're in pretty good shape. Cause we can sack the Shambling Gas to kill both of them. All right, oh, opponent's gonna Spell Pierce. They mill in Unholy Heat. We might be good. We might be good. Mills a Ragavan. Well, we're gonna pay the two. Who get down the Bombardment, snipe a DRC and our opponent drew a lot of cards, but their cards just aren't that good at the moment. Like the Blood Moon doesn't do anything. And now we get to get in for one. Actually, maybe we leave it back because of Ragavan. The clock will be on next turn. I really don't want to get hit by Ragavan. That would be bad. Plus it's only one damage here. No, do you see? Oh, they are hovering in the graveyard. Do they really draw another? <sighs> treasure Cruise begets more Treasure Cruise. That's kind of how it goes. Yeah, they were hovering the graveyard, and that is another draw three. Oh, we are so far behind in cards. <laughs> Hopefully it's all blood moods. 
passes. We draw more animation modules. Well, that's a backup. Uh, animation module. How long do we wait because of Ragavan? Yeah, let's let's wait another turn. Wow, opponent sacking the fight. Opponent apparently just not has not hit what they needed. Sacking the fiery eyelet. That's a good sign. When your opponent has six cards in hand and still <laughs> is still sacking their lands to draw more. Pretty good sign that their hand might not be as strong as it looks. Found it plays another land. And maybe we should just start attacking. Ah, uh, okay. Thought sees. Well, at least now we get to see what we need to be scared of. Let's it go. Two counters, two blood moons, and an unholy heat. Well, I mean, take the unholy and hopefully this orc army can march to victory. Animation module, add a counter, and get in for two. Just how we drew it up. This is exactly why we're playing animation module. <laughs> to grow our orc army for three mana. There's no Ragavan. If they top deck one, they top deck one. Hit ya. We do need to close out the game, so attacking is helpful. Let's see if they have a surveil land. This would be a good turn to grab a surveil land for our opponent. No. All right, opponent. So opponent needs to draw. <laughs> All right, there's the Ragavan. After waiting for two turns to play around the Ragavan, we thought sees to make sure there's no Ragavan and our opponent top decks the Ragavan. Thought sees bug, thought sees bug. <laughs> That's not even how it's supposed to work, but still, it's got to be some kind of bug. <laughs> opponent plays a land. I mean, that's fine. So now what we can do, since we know our opponent still has nothing, the Rag ooh, the Ragavan's not going to be a problem, because we can animation module and start making servos. Is it worth cracking this fetch? The problem is basically lightning bolt, right? And they still have a lot of bolts left in their deck. So I think we don't. We could make an extra servo if we did, but I think we just... Grow the army, pay one, make a servo, get in with the army. Now the servo can deal with Ragavan. Plus we have the Goblin Bombardment. We're actually like, we could win next turn, right? I think our opponent probably has to play defensive. What a weird game. Oh, they're gonna dash it? Oh, gets and hits us. I think they needed to play defensive Ragavan there. I mean, we are gonna block. Not gonna go to two. Ragavan down. Did you draw removal? Doesn't this attack just literally leave our opponent dead on board? All right, we untap, Demonic Tutor. Good card, but I don't even think we need it at the moment. I mean, they have one unknown card in hand. It could be a Bolt. It could be a Unholy Heat. Well, we're gonna go for it. Animation module resolves. Make a servo for ya. And opponent's down to two. And now we gotta do a sack our dorks. About it. <laughs> down. Well, this is not how the deck is supposed to work. <laughs> What a weird game. Is animation module just good? <laughs> That's like the fairest use of animation module I've ever seen. We were not comboing at all, but animation module kind of won us that game with just that orc army. Our opponent, uh, yeah, didn't find an answer for it. It went all the way. We do a little removal customization. I guess... Yeah, it seems fine. Leyline of the Void seems pretty good. I'm always on the fence. Like, is Leyline worth it? Our opponent's deck can still win through a Leyline pretty easily. But Leyline does slow down Dragon Rage Channeler. It shuts down Treasure Cruise. So I think it's worth trying. Or maybe I'm just, you got some recency bias going on. Because last game our opponent, <laughs> Treasure Cruise into Treasure Cruise into Treasure Cruise. One combo piece, one tutor, a thought season, a fatal push, and a greedy freebooter. Opponent land and passing, okay. And I guess we just lead on the thought seas. Yeah, take a look at what's going on over there. Ledger Shredder, Expressive Iteration, Bobble. We'll take the Expressive Iteration. We can uh, fatal push the Ledger Shredder. They do get a trigger. But I think that's fine. So next turn we can. Like animation module fatal push or freebooter fatal push. Opponent just connives away at land anyway. Well, yes, you get to draw your card. Ooh, another thought seize. Well, let's deal with a ledger shredder. And well, since we do a thought seize, we might just thought seize again. Would prefer opponent not to just like treasure cruise and refill here. Well, we don't have a removal spell, so we probably gotta take DRC. It's a little painful because it is going to make comboing off difficult. Opponent land. Should probably target themselves, right? Yeah, opponent's gonna target themselves. See if they wanna shuffle away the top card before they draw it. 
All right, the answer is yes. So opponent, they kind of got nothing going on here. The question is, do we just tutor with Greedy Freebooter? I can't imagine they're just going to bolt it, right? That seems not great. Well, let's play the Freebooter. I guess we can just Freebooter Animation Module tap land. Animation Module doesn't do anything now, but it is important if we're going to combo at some point. Our deck does not have a very fast clock. <laughs> the combo is a fast clock. If we combo off, oh, well, expressive iteration. That is a good one. I mean, the combo is very fast when it goes off, but when we're playing fairly, we do not have the fastest of clocks. Finds a bobble. Plays the bobble. So many bobbles. Our opponent is a, it's a bobble, a bobble head, you might say. <laughs> so bad. Please don't grade that one in the comments. <laughs> Opponent gets to draw a card. <laughs> uh, come on, deck. Fraxian Tower. Fraxian Tower is really good in this deck, but it doesn't really do anything right now. So the challenging thing right now with this tutor is we don't really know what we need, right? We have Animation Module. We need Crime Novelist. We need Goblin Bombardment. The problem is by just waiting, we just we're doing pretty much nothing which is just giving our opponent time to find treasure cruises and card draw in ragavans play the tower we could i guess like tutor for like a bow master or something give up on trying to combo so animation module puts a counter on a thing that already has a counter but we don't already have a counter yeah i think we're gonna I think we're going to cash in this greedy freebooter scry is going to go to waste because we're about to tutor uh land to the bottom in case it gets countered. Yeah, it's too hard to take a combo piece here, so I think we just Bowmaster. We just don't know what combo piece we need. But Bowmaster is good against a Ragavan. We saw last game, animation module, Bowmaster army. I get maybe that's our combo this match. <laughs> the real combo is using animation module to put a counter on your org army and make a servo. I don't even know when we want to flash it in, honestly. We know there's a bolt, so it's not like it's going to live. But really, the army living might be more, more important in a weird way. All right, about it. What do you got? Passes. And thin. And surveil. Into. Well, more lands that we don't need. We have plenty of manas. I guess we can get to the point where we can... <laughs> more animation modules. I guess we can get to the point where we can, like, bowmaster and activate animation module and pay to make a servo all in one turn maybe yeah we're gonna play the land so next turn we have enough mana we need bowmaster ping ya animation module will counter on the army make two servos assuming we want to cash in our treasure which we actually might not we do need the treasure if we do manage to crime novelist combo having that first artifact to sack is helpful Ugh. Well, there's a treasure cruise. That's a thing. Like, oh, our opponent just has so many more cards than us. I don't think we win the late game against this deck. Like, they have the treasure cruises and we don't. So, well, here's a Ragavan. This might force our hand on this Bowmaster. If they encounter the Bowmaster, we're probably, we're probably just done. Do any of those six cards? Yep. All right. Yep, yep, yep. I mean, I know we're at 14, but our opponent's kind of basically a control deck, and I think they've gained control of the game. Let's just combo off. Let's just combo off and not have to worry about <laughs> all chipping in for random points of damage. Again, not super close to comboing. We do have a combo piece, but I like that we have Thoughtseize and a bunch of dorks. Pithy Needle, DRC, two counters. Um, yeah, let's take the DRC. The counters we can play around, I think, at the moment. Opponent passes. Oh, play the land. Crack the land. Grab a schwamp. Yeah, I guess we can just pass a potent. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Crack that fetch, please. Oh, okay. Remember that thing I said about being able to play around counters? I take it back. <laughs> Oh, this Bowmaster is about to get countered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that was probably a little bit of a pun. I think we should have just ran out. Probably should have just ran out the the Bowmaster. I was thinking like, oh, we'll just play it when our opponent cracks their fetch. And maybe we get more value of them like, I'm going to try to brainstorm and then crack my fetch. But uh, our opponent just didn't crack the fetch. <laughs> so, uh, so we never got to resolve it. So yeah, that I think that was a little pun.
Hopefully, well, I don't know. We'll see. See how impactful it was. Bowmaster is good. It's good against Treasure Cruise, good against Brainstorm. So losing it does hurt. I mean, I guess we could ramp out a ley line. I don't even know. Does it even matter at this point? Is it too late to be good? Uh, about it. Finds a land. Well, go, go, shambling gas. <laughs> Ye old shambles beat down. The nice thing about our creatures is they're so bad. You don't really want to spend removal on them. <laughs> we, we, that's uh, that's our technique with this deck. Play so many bad one drops that if you want to kill them, you don't even feel like it's worth it. So they just slowly beat you down. Uh, let's play an animation module. We got two. If they want to spell pierce one, we're kind of okay with, with that. We'll get the second one down. I mean, we're hitting for three a turn. Opponent cracks the fetch. Okay. Are they gonna counter spell? Why crack the fetch? Hmm. All right, so there's the spell pierce, sure. Well, we got another one. Animation module part two. And go. Could use a tutor or two. I guess it's not impossible that we combo. We still need two cards. This matchup is a little tricky to combo against. So you just have a lot of removal encounters, which is pretty good at stopping the combo. Plus, I guess they have pithy needles. So if we ever get close to like goblin bombardmenting or whatever, they can probably just lock it down. Oh, but <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> opponent well we got to keep crime novelist i don't even know if it's good here but that is a combo piece opponent finally had to spend a real removal spell on <laughs> one of our horrible one ones that honestly at that point i think i would no oh, treasure cruise. always with the treasure cruise i swear <laughs> this deck just always has the treasure cruise passing well, okay. So to combo off, we need the sack outlet, and we need to find a way to resolve our stuff through our opponent's counters. Get in and hit ya. I mean, it might be worth playing the ley line. Sack a sack of shambling guest. Make a treasure. Play the ley line. I mean, they did just exile their graveyard, so this is mostly going to keep their graveyard empty. Shutting down future treasure cruises, at least. Or if it eats a counter, that's... Okay, that's actually kind of a win. Maybe Leyline lane is good. If it's good enough that our opponent's countering it. Ledger Shredder. Sure. Mishra's Bobble. And Pidge's Aragavan. I guess Raghavan, one of the upsides of our deck is all these shambling casts are pretty good against Raghavan. What do we do about a Ledger Shredder, though? Drawing Goblin Bombardment would be sweet. Drawing it with our opponent being tapped out would be the sweetest. I'm still very worried that they can interact. Opponent tap land. Passes. Gets to draw a card. Orcish Bowmasters. Okay, we're going to pass. Bowmasters is good. Good enough that it should at least eat a counter removal spell. Oh, we have enough mana, I think, that if we can draw, if we can draw the sack outlet, we should be able to combo immediately. I'm kind of surprised our opponent doesn't just run out the pithy needle. It seems like you're going to pithy needle bombardment no matter what. I don't know what else you're going to put it on. Oh, wait, they know, they must have an answer to this. Wow. Wait, they just tapped out for a treasure? They saw the bow mast. Okay, well, we will kill the ledger shredder. <laughs> I guess our, I don't know how our opponent has so many cards in hand and they're uh, doing nothing with them, but wow. All right, we get a servo. Opponent draws four, but they're tapped down. We get to kill the ledger shredder. That was one of the wildest plays I've seen anyone make. Now I think we just, we just might as well make the servos. I don't even think we need to combo. I think we just win. Oh. Well, we could have comboed too, but I don't know why your opponent cast that treasure cruise. So, well, no comboing that game, but still a pretty good win. We are continuing to work on our crime novel. <laughs> uh, this hand got a bunch of tutors. It might look really bad, but in theory, we gamble for a combo piece. We die about content once we find a creature for a combo piece. Ashton's altar, that's all three combo pieces. GG. Gamble is a risky one. It is only one mana, but... You never know. You never know what gamble. It lived. It might be the best named magic card, most aptly named magic card, because it is actually a gamble. <laughs> it's a it's a tutor, but there is some percent chance that it goes horribly wrong. Hello to you, opponent. Uh, well, let's crack our fetch. Grab a tapped blood crypt, I guess. And 
There's a cry. Okay. Well, that is another combo piece. Let's smell the black cleave cliffs. So we need to play Ashdod's altar, play crime novelist, gamble for. Are we being alchemied? I think we're getting alchemied. Is this some alchemy thopter deck? <laughs> That's one of the things I, I've liked about Timeless. When Timeless first launched, there was a lot of angst about, oh, it's an alchemy format. Innovative meta tech. So it's basically just card draw for artifact creatures. Okay. But there's a lot of angst about alchemy in Timeless. And it turns out you almost never see alchemy cards. Very rarely do I see alchemy cards in Timeless because they're just not really strong enough. Well, I think... I think we're just going to play an Ashnod's Altar past the turn. Opponent, Island, and Barbed Spike. Okay. Hilariously, their Ornithopter can't draw a card with Innovative Metatech because it doesn't have any power. <laughs> One or more artifact creatures deal combat damage. Yeah. Oh, do we just play Crime Novelist and hope it lives? It might be better to Bowmaster. We can Bowmaster to snipe the 2-1, and then we can Crime Novelist next turn, and we get mana off Phyrexian Tower? Yeah, I think this is probably better. Let's play Phyrexian Tower. Play the Bowmaster. Snipe the 2-1. So far, we have kept our opponent from drawing cards with this meta attack, and now we're just going to sack... Get our missing combo piece. The last piece of the puzzle is animation module. We've managed to do it without needing to cast gamble. Actually, wait, no, he still might need to gamble. <laughs> we need a shambling gas. We need a we need a sackable artifact on the battlefield. All right, so opponent's gonna equip so he can seek. Get in for one. Thankfully, our opponent's clock has not been that fast. We will take the two, actually. Sure. Down to 15. Opponent. Draws a card. Spyglass Shirin. Sure. This is actually going to come down to gamble. Oh, goodness. We can play Animation Module. We sack the Bowmaster, play Crime Novelist. Then we gamble for just like a shambling gas, so then we go infinite. So it's going to come down to gamble, not discarding our combo piece. Well, play, we got to play our stuff first because we don't want to discard it. Sacking the Bowmaster is painful, but our opponent's like, Tap down mostly. This is a pretty good time to go for it. Oh, I wish it wasn't Gamble. If we just had the combo, it'd be much easier. Okay, sack the Bowmaster. <laughs> All right, it's, it's gonna literally be a Gamble. Play the Crime Novelist. Okay, so now we Gamble. So 67% we win the game, 33% we lose the game. <laughs> Shambling Guest and... <laughs> <laughs> The best laid plans, uh, yeah. <laughs> so we discarded the Shambling Guest. <laughs> oh, Gamble. That is, that is so Gamble. That is so, you never know a Gamble. That is, I've had that happen so many times. <laughs> Infinite combo, oh no, and now they can portable, yeah. Oh, we might actually lose because of that. Oh, no. yeah, I mean, it's not like we can really stop this gonna snipe we actually had all the combo pieces set up we just did not have the first artifact to sack to start the loop but it hits us that is brutal <laughs> gamble's just a one of two when i first was putting together this deck i had four gambles at first and it's so risky that i kept cutting them till i get down to one <laughs> and i oh and wait what a Okay, Shambling Guest, go. And we would have drawn the Shambling Guest this turn anyway if we just slow rolled it. But now we don't have the animation module. Oh, we're going to end up losing this, aren't we? Portable hole. I mean, we can sack the Shambling Guest. I guess we have to make a treasure. So if we draw a tutor or another animation module, we can just go for it. We have like a turn though. Machiko's Reign of Truth. Uh, we are getting smacked for a ton. Bounda hits us for nine. It's gotta be this turn or we are dead. Down to three. Removal would keep us alive for a turn. Pony gets to seek. Okay, this meta tech's like popping off now. We draw more crime novelists. Wow. We actually lost because of Gamble. <laughs> we, we had such a cool line too. 
mathematically we are 60 67 percent so i think this is one of those cases where we actually like kind of literally got unlucky like there were two lands we could discard versus one shambling cast well brother sedan seems very good against this deck and then we bring in a little bit more removal and just run it like that brother sedan though seems like a blowout our opponent's decks kind of just build about cheap artifacts, and it also gets rid of uh, the portable holes that were eating away our combo pieces. The card is named well, though. <laughs> it, it does live up to its name. What is the most aptly named magic card with how the just the name of the card perfectly describes how the card plays? It might be Gamble. What else is... Some of the Wraths are pretty good, like Farewell. Definitely been a lot of games where my opponent puts a farewell on the stack and I'm just like, all right, see ya, see ya, <laughs> scooping it up. That one's, that one's pretty good. There's gotta be some other good ones. Let me know in the comments what other, what magic cards are, are named perfectly. I like that we have the brothers at end. We actually have crime novelist and animation module and a tutor. So we're actually not that far away from comboing. Ornithopter. I feel like timeless is like the ornithopter format. <laughs> Out of all the formats in Magic these days, I think this is the one that Ornithopter shows up most in. Bone it, Bobbles. See us sometime with ninjas. I guess that's more of historic ninjas, but Ornithopter making a comeback. Who would have thought that, like, a 0-2 would be one of the most impactful cards of, like, 1994 or whatever? <laughs> was it Antiquities when it was first printed? Who would have thought that it would be the 0-2 Ornithopter that would stand the test of time? Not the, not the rares, none of the flashy, you know bombs at the time no it's it's ornithopter well grab the surveil in mm, i think we gotta keep it it hurts but i think we gotta keep it so this turn we can thought sees to clear the way in animation module we're pretty much playing for a big blowout with brothers at end i think that's gonna probably be the goal of the game but we can do a hand check and make sure uh our opponent doesn't have a counter or something a way to deal with our crime novelist Opponents and Imperium Thopterist pumps your Thopters, conjures an or <laughs> This is like a this is actually an alchemy deck. I have never seen anyone playing this before. So since we have the brothers at end, I think we just take the glyph. We also have the lightning bolt, so we're not gonna lose to Ornithopter or this thing, the Thopterist. Well, we'll just alright, Bobble, sure. I mean our opponent's down to pretty much nothing. They're down to literally nothing. They have an Ornithopter. They get a redraw with a bobble. They have a portable hole, which can snipe our animation module, though. Because we have Brothers at end, I don't know if we even really care. We kind of just need to draw land here. That's the downside of leaving that thought sees. Oh, three drop. Um Yeah, let's say animation module. Our opponent can answer it, but eventually we're gonna get to Brothers and End and get it back. We do need to draw land. Opponent swooping look out that dies to brothers and end so that's fine and opponent gonna get in for zero three drop <laughs> oh two lands for three drops about it cracks gets a tap land and untaps and dark seal citadel if they ever turn that into a creature that's gonna be a problem portable hole all right that's fine. We expected that. We really just need to draw land for this brothers at end and all of our problems go away. Well, okay. Greedy freebooter is not great, but it can make a treasure eventually. I don't know how we get it to die. Our opponent's stuff all is flying. At least we're only taking one a turn. Ooh, there's a the land. Ooh, interesting. Do we even have to Brothers at end? I don't even think we need to yet. Let's just play the Crime Novelist. Like we could Brothers at end and just sweep our opponent's board, but I feel like we can get more value out of it. What's the worst that can happen by waiting? Angelic, what? Angelic Ascension. Upgrades the Ornithopter to a 4-4, and now we can't Brothers to end it. I mean, I guess it wouldn't have mattered last turn anyway. They could have just done it in response. Oh, there's the animation module. Oh, wait, does this mean we get to go infinite? Okay, Ashnod's altar. About it. No. Oh, and a spell pierce. <laughs> wow. Okay, we are we are totally getting alchemy out of this game. What a, what a brew. I can't believe our opponent's deck is popping off. Angelic Ascension. I remember people when that card was printed in like Corset 2019 or something, like a while ago, people were hyped about like, oh, I can use it to upgrade my own creatures, but no one ever did it. It never actually became a thing. 
but our opponent just pulled it off and there's an insole artifact and now we go to one and wow so close and yeah brothers it end doesn't work anymore because of this angel we were so close in so many ways like to just going infinite and now we're short on mana right if we had more mana we can diabolic intent the greedy freebooter to get a actually no can we do it Diabolic and a greedy freebooter, get a treasure. Animation module is one. Goblin bombardment is two. I mean, let's sack it and see. I mean, our opponent has one card left in hand. If they can kill the novelist. Oh, all right, yep. Or counter the tutor, that also works. Oh, well, <laughs> you got us, you got us. Yeah, I like it. It seems pretty reasonable. Sure. I'm gonna do a little surveilling. Well, uh, we'll start with greeds and go. Goblin Bombardment might be one of my favorite cards. I feel like I play a lot of Goblin Bombardment decks. I don't know why. It's I guess it's like you can play it fairly, you can play it in like goblins. Uh it's a combo piece. It just has a lot of uses. Like it's a free sack outlet, it's a infinite creature payoff with the damage it deals. So I guess it just does a lot of little things. I'm glad they brought it to Arena. It's one of those cards that Arena is definitely better for having Goblin Bombardment on it. Opponent. I'm a little worried they might be show and telling. Surveil and Simic. Show and tell seems like a possibility. Well, let's set greeds. Make a couple treasures, draw a couple cards. So what are we looking for here? We have the Goblin Bombardment. We probably keep a land. We got the Bombardments. All right, two lands, another bolt. I guess we kind of have a lot of burn. Are we a burn deck this game? Maybe we're a burn deck <laughs> rather than a combo deck. I mean, Goblin Bombardment's kind of burn too. Well, let's play, you yeah, know, let's play a Bombardment. Do you have a counter spell? Please say no. All right, they do. Well, uh, let's just pass. We want to leave up the Bowmaster. We could play another Bombardment, but I'd rather see if our opponent brainstorms or something and we just snipe him with the Bowmaster. A bonnet gets back the counter spell and passes. Well, let's crack the Bloodstain Mire, grab a Raccoon Theater, and yeah, we already got a Diabolic Intent. We don't have enough creatures to sacrifice. Mill the Diabolic Intent. Fair. <laughs> I guess we were just fated to draw Diabolic Intent this turn. Well, Goblin Bombardment, take two. Oh, well, don't counter this one. We want one of these. Okay, so Goblin Bombardment down. The scary thing about show and tell is if they ever just show and tell, we're in really sketchy shape. So we know our opponent has a counter spell now. All right, Shambling Ghast. Is that good enough to counter opponent? new no. well i mean that's a damage and a treasure or we can diabolic intent it we do have a million diabolic intents we do know there's still that counter spell though so it's gonna be hard to get through i guess we can just wait i'm not sure what we would tutor up here it's not like we have some wow opponent's just not doing anything it's not like we have some great tutor target we're missing two combo pieces so we don't know exactly what one it would be nice if we could draw one of the combo pieces and then tutor the second Let's go for it. Diabelle get that. Sag the dork. Do you counter the tutor or do you counter what we tutor up? The age old question. With counter spell, you might as well just counter what we tutor up. So we're missing two combo pieces. What about just ignoring the combo? I'm actually kind of tempted to just be like, all right, we're not gonna combo this game and take a second bow master. Like we could take like a crime novelist and hope to draw the missing combo piece. But with two bolts in hand and two bow masters and goblin bombardment, which can sack the bow masters in the army, our most realistic plan, yeah. <laughs> This feels really bad because normally we're supposed to be tutoring for combo pieces, but I think we're like a really janky burn deck this game. Opponent considers. Well, Bowmaster, I expect this eats a counter. It does mean our opponent's not... Okay, oh, stern scolding. Sure. Well, uh, Bowmasters? If they want to spend their counter on it, I guess that's fine. At least it's a counter out of our opponent's hand. How about a Bowmasters? Wow, opponent lets it go. Ping ya. Opponent considers, get to ping ya. So opponent's down to 15. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 97, 654. So we can get our opponent to like 
four if we resolve everything ashnod's altar well that's not the combo piece we really wanted we already have a sack outlet the thing about show and tell is even though it looks like things are going really well for us it's definitely very possible yeah let's uh let's do some tutoring diabolican tap yeah, well, is it lightning bolt or bowmasters probably lightning ah uh, lightning bolt or just one yeah let's go bowmasters bowmasters is a lightning bolt right if we play it and just sack everything we get three damage out of it so i think it's just better bolt at the moment it does get hit by stern scolding which is a downside but in general i think it's just better bolt at the moment yeah we'll untap wow we just drew the bolt anyway the burn plan is looking realistic now if our opponent tries to show and tell we might be able to just burn them out in response uh, opponent wow brainstorms into the bowmaster that is the most painful brainstorm i've ever seen so we could flash in another bowmaster but i kind of feel like we don't we're just gonna let it go my worry is if we flash in the bowmaster that gives our opponent priority to kill the bowmaster on the battlefield so i kind of i don't think we even need to get a second bowmaster down so we're gonna get three damage here and a three three so opponent's gonna go to eight we can sack our creature seven six we only need to resolve two bolts to win the game so now we just wait we wait until our opponent taps down for like their show and tell or whatever and just <laughs> and just burn them out what a weird weird game i feel like show and tell should be a bad matchup for us but our opponent is just like having the worst show and tell drive ever maybe they're not even show and tell we haven't even seen a show and tell i'm just assuming that it's show and tell based on the colors but and like yeah the cards that we've seen nothing in their deck makes me think it's not show and tell we haven't seen anything that i'm like oh that'd be really weird in a show and tell deck about it mystic sanctuary to get back <laughs> the very painful brainstorm Oh, all right. So it's officially a show and tell deck. If we let this resolve and they put omniscience into play, they could just combo off immediately. So I think we got to go for it. So bolt you down to four and then bolt you down to one. This has got to draw out the counter. Bolt you again. Well, we ran really awkwardly in the perfect way. We just drew all of our burn. We don't even have to flash in the last Bowmaster. We can just sacrifice something, Goblin Bombardment, and <laughs> we beat Show and Tell. We, we, we won a game off of Show and Tell. Sideboarding against Show and Tell. Our plan is Roiling Vortex. Roiling Vortex. Uh, it's not enough it's not enough it wasn't enough when we played show and tell it's not enough when we play against show and tell but it's the best options in our colors i think like being in Rakdos, we don't really have counters so our best hope is like roiling vortex plus thought seas being enough or it is theoretically possible that we just combo first like if our opponent's draw isn't like we saw last game our opponent just kind of stumbled around forever if our opponent has a slow draw i think it's realistic that if we have our best draw we could just race them to the combo egg we do have two combo pieces but again show and tell the hand just doesn't do anything i'm gonna put the diabolic intent to the bottom we have two combo pieces plus the thought seize plus the roiling vortex so this actually seems kind of good we do need a land or three <laughs> found at mystic sanctuary opponent also mulliganed a lot but that's kind of normal for show and tell Polita delta blood crypt untapped and thought sees you counterspell omniscience atroxa and they have the island so i think we have to take the counterspell here if we could take their only finisher maybe we take a finisher and just play through the counter but with our opponent having two finishers i think we take the counter so we can hopefully ooh, that's a good draw so we can hopefully land roiling vortex and even though roiling vortex isn't usually enough it could be maybe this time it actually will be <laughs> i mean it is good in the matchup right if you free cast things with omniscience it does hit you for five so it does shut down like the omni kill whatever but it doesn't just stop your opponent from slamming an atrox and doing it that way well that is a land it's a little slow these surveil lands 
I feel like the Surveillance, the more I play with them, the more I think they're really good, but the more I run into cases where even as a one of in this deck, I'm like, oh, just coming off the top at the wrong time and having to play it tapped when we'd really like to get down the Roiling Vortex this turn is, uh, is very brutal. All right, well, there's a show and tell. We do get to show and tell the Roiling Vortex. Opponent shows and tells Omniscience. Last card, Atroxa takes five. But how do we beat Atroxa? So that's the problem with this Rolling Vortex plan, right? Like, so we did it. We did the thing. We put the Rolling Vortex into play. We slowed down your omniscience. The thing is, our opponent's got an Atroxa. It's still a 7-7 flyer. I think that the Rolling Vortex plan, much more realistic in like a burn deck or a deck that has a really fast clock. Like if you can use Rolling Vortex to stop the omniscience kill for a turn, and then just kill your opponent, that's fine. The problem we have here is Atroxa, essentially. Like, uh, no matter what we do, we're still on a two-turn clock from Atroxa just beating us down. I guess we're gonna try to thought seize the other Atroxa. We literally, I don't believe. Yeah, we literally do not have an answer for this Atroxa in our deck. I'm not sure anything we do here actually matters. So we thought seize the second Atroxa, but we're just gonna Die to the 7-7 seven, seven flyer. Now pass the turn. Found it. Down to 11. Temporarily. Gets and hits us. Also, this ley line, if they get it down, does shut down the goblin bombardment kill. Brainstorm for manas. Yeah, this is kind of the issue. This is exactly what happened when we played Show and Tell and people brought in Railing Vortex. Yeah, it's like kind of annoying. Yeah, I can't like do the whole thing. But does it keep Atroxa from killing you? Not necessarily. Diabolic Intent and dead. Well, I guess we can bring in, can we bring in the Shieldred Sea Dick maybe? Just to have a tutorable answer for Atroxa. Maybe go down a Diabolic Intent and just run it like that. Show and Tell's really good. I almost think this deck's too good for Timeless. It's just like so, so consistent and fast. Well, we're on the play for game number three. Can we outcrime novel? <laughs> Show and tell. I mean, we got a Roiling Vortex again. We got a nice little curve, actually. Greedy Freebooter, Roiling Vortex, Crime Novelist. We still are two combo pieces away from going infinite, but I feel like this hand gives us a shot at least. I'll play the pathway, play the freebooter, go. How devastating is your hand? Island and brainstorms, sure. Demonic Tutor, well, I mean, Demonic Tutor can't really be bad. Getting the best card in your deck for two mana, pretty much always good. Hit ya, down to 19. We are just gonna get down the vortex though. So I think in theory, how can we do this? I guess we still need multiple combo pieces. Opponent brainstorms. So we need to play the crime novelist. We need to find bombardment. Yeah, there's still a couple of steps for us to combo. We'll see, maybe this vortex will keep us alive long enough to pull it off. Fetch land passes. Well, pings us down to 18. What is our game plan now? We could just play all the all the one mana one ones and try to beat down. That might actually be, might actually be our most realistic plan. We need Demonic Tutor, but what do we tutor for? We're in that same awkward position where we need two different combo pieces. So if we're gonna try to set the combo, what combo piece do we tutor for? It's so much easier if we have two combo pieces and can just tutor the, the missing one. Well, we're gonna grab the untap land, Freebooter. Yeah, we're just, we're just gonna go one drops. Here we go. <laughs> Rakdos, aggro, one mana one ones for days. And, well, let's see. We haven't got turn three show and tell yet this match. Is it about to happen? And if it does, does the Rolling Vortex keep us alive? Opponent down to 15. Land. I mean, if they show and tell, we get to put Crime Novelist into play. Haha. Uh, show and tell. Mm-hmm. Crime Novelist. Ugh, opponent. Omniscience. Ah, uh, can we beat an Atrox? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's not an Atrox, it's an Ulamog. That's real bad. So there goes our Rolling Vortex. Pony goes to nine. If that's all they have, oh, Born Upon the Winds. Brain, yeah. I mean, at this point, I guess it's not technically over, but it seems like Show and Tell pretty much always wins from here. Leyline is Sanctity. And Little Mama Emerical. 
and that's why show and tell is pretty good. But uh, we did get him in game one. All right. One land gamble keep. This hand has a bunch of combo pieces. This is the riskiest keep ever. All right, gamble for a land. You should definitely not do this if you ever play magic. Do not. <laughs> do not do this. Come on. Okay. Oh. If we discarded that land, we pretty much just lose. Thankfully, well, all right, that Thossies makes it worse. Lightning Bolt was probably the best thing we could discard. I guess it's matchup dependent, but we didn't discard either of our combo pieces, although our opponent will discard our combo pieces. Another Bowmaster. Let's crack this fetch. I have a, <laughs> I have a huge fear of getting stifled in this format. Even though the odds of our opponent going blue mana stifle is pretty low, it could happen. Maybe I just, oh, Demonic Tutor. Maybe I just always assume, let's Bowmaster, that I'm playing against people like me that want to just destroy people's lands. So maybe I'm more afraid of getting stifled than I should be, because most people are not just like, ha randomly trying to stifle you for <laughs> no real reason. Get and hit you for two. So our opponent tutored for something. So they gotta have their best card in hand. What that card is, I am not sure, honestly. Well, so to combo off, what do we need? Multiple pieces still. Oh God, Dark Ritual One Ring. Okay. Well, let's get down this Bowmaster. If this Bowmaster sticks, it doesn't help right now, but it will help long term against the One Ring. Hopefully our opponent can't kill it. Ooh. Hmm. Yeah, we could tutor. I think we'll just play Shambling Gas. That's better to sack. Pass the turn because of the One Ring. Well, it's the battle of the busted Lord of the Rings cards. The One Ring versus Orcish Bowmasters. Magic the way Tolkien intended. Opponent. Wow. No fear of the Bowmaster. Just draws with a Run Ring. Takes two. Grows the Orc. Opponent has no fear. See, that not that like one of the biggest favor fails in current magic? Like, it's the one ring. It's the one ring. Do you really need to have two of them? Ooh, that's animation module. Wait a minute. We're actually getting kind of close to comboing now. We have the crime novelist. We drew the animation module. We still need the sack outlet at some point. Let's just greedy freebooter. I guess we also need some mana. Get down the animation module before it can get discarded. Opponent drops to 10. And wow. People are just completely disregarding this Bowmaster. We have that other opponent that like treasure cruised into it. <laughs> well, uh, yes, we will take free damage and grow our orc. Our orc's up to an 8-8. Eight, eight. Seriously, the third, the one ring. <laughs> Does not make any sense. <laughs> oh, the one ring. I heard someone compare the one ring to a colorless time walk and it kind of is true and when i started thinking about it i was like man that's ugh, that's that's a pretty brutal card <laughs> do we really want a colorless a colorless time walk do we time walks a card that gets or time warps a card that's been like banned on arena not in timeless but in historic well let's tutor i think we're just gonna try to set the combo up we can grab the bombardment we can play the land and this should Maybe just set us up to go infinite next turn. That's idea anyway. Cannot attack because of the one ring. Well, this Goblin Bob Barnabit's gonna be good. Opponent's gonna try to snap our bow, snipe our Bowmaster, but we can sack the Bowmaster to kill the Bowmaster. Our opponent has like infinite cards in hand though. What are the odds that our combo actually works? That's the problem. This does free the one ring for opponent to draw even more cards. We'd prefer our opponent to just tap out here. Just tap out. Tap out. We don't really care for what. Other than killing our combo pieces. But just spend your mana. I guess a one ring. The fourth the one ring would also be annoying. But what's your plan, Yargle? What's your plan? Draws with the one ring. Opponent's drawn infinitely more cards than us this game. <laughs> They've drawn so many cards. Desolation Field. Sure. And, well, that's a lot of mana being tapped. I mean, they also have to deal with the orc, right? If they don't deal with the orc, we just win by attacking. So they do have to kill the orc. And then we have the combo set up too. We might have a shot here. Opponent. Gonna Fido push the orc. Well, we get to sack it. Hit you down to six. I mean, I guess this is not bad. Our opponent only has one black source up. So that's one potential removal spell. 
and then I think we just play the crime novelist, but we don't immediately try to combo. We're hoping that our opponent makes the first move and we can combo in response. Opponent, reading crime novelist, which is exactly what the crime novelist wants. Moving up the, the bestseller list here with uh, <laughs> all those readers. March, oh, okay, that should do it. March Wretched Sorrow. So in response, uh, we'll sag the freebooter, get our treasure, ping ya. And now the fun begins. Sack the treasure, trigger animation module, use the mana from the novelist to pay, servo, sack it, infinite damage, infinite servos, and that's how we can win in response. Our opponent played three one rings, drew half their deck, had all the removal, and Crime Novelist did not care. In the end, Crime Novelist got it done. Uh, unfortunately, we have essentially zero cards to bring in against this deck. Maybe literally zero. Like, Shielded's Edict, I guess, could be okay if our opponent has a Planeswalker or something. So I guess that might be worth bringing in for that, but... Yeah, we'll go down the gamble. Even though, honestly, gamble was the hero of that last game. That gamble, it it was a it was a risk, but it did find our land on turn one. We should not have kept that hand, but we got paid. We did get paid off for it. Should gamble be played more, just as a tutor? I know, obviously, there's situations where it's good, right? Like if you're trying to pass in flames or something, then gamble is not much of a downside. Like, sure, whatever. Like if I discard it, I discard it. But in this deck. We don't really want to discard her stuff. It's not like we're using the graveyard for anything. All right, opponent on a play for game number oh, for game number three. Five lands, two shambling gas. Even a gamble could not save this hand. No lands. Well, this one we're gonna keep. Uh, yeah. I mean, five is not a big number, but I guess for five, this hand's not the absolute worst. Well, getting even worse. There goes our tutor. Yeah, this might be, this might be a tough one. So we need animation module and the sack outlet. That's a lot of, a lot of pieces to go infinite. Yield of Gwyn for opponent and passes. Get in for one. Down to 19. Play the raccoon theater. And, ooh, okay. Well, that's another combo piece. Well, now we're actually like, not that far away from comboing. We're, we pretty much need the goblin bombardment or Ashdod's altar. Now we're very far away from combling, and our opponent's gonna make a shuffle our deck. Well, that's not good for us. If they take Crime Novelist, at least we get a, a zombie, a, a bombardment. Yeah, we kind of wanted those. <laughs> we, we did have plans for those goblin bombardments. All right, well, now I guess if we're going infinite, it's gonna be with Ashnod's Altar. Ashnod's Altar is not as good of a way to combo, that's for sure. Well, uh, Frexian Tower and Crime Novelist and one ya. We're on the beatdown plan. Opponent down to 18. Ugh, and the Demonic Tutor. Opponents are on their Demonic Tutor both games. Not bad. Yeah, it's probably, what do you just get a one ring for next turn probably? Land. Feed the Swarm on the Novelist. All right, well, we drew a Thought Seize. See if they did get her one ring. Looks like. Ugh. Well, we're taking the one ring, but there's also a shield rid and a Liliana. Yeah, this is this is not good all around. So if they draw land, they can shield it. Otherwise, all right, here comes a Lily. I imagine they just tick it up. Well, we're going to discard a land so we can kill the Lily. We attack it and then bolt it. We would really like the shield rid to go away, though. I'm not sure if it's worth it. Can we wait one more turn? Right, we're gonna try. All right, Fraxian Tower. Well, yeah, let's hit the Lily. Fraxian Tower, we don't mind discarding. It's legendary anyway. So hit the Lily back down to three. We're hoping that our opponent ticks up and discards the Shield Rid before they hit a land. Because I don't know how we're gonna beat the Shield Rid, honestly. We really need them to discard to Lily, and then we'll try to kill the Lily. So opponent's gonna tick up. We can discard the I'm Tower. Tired of your secrets. All right, Shield Rid down. Well, now if we can kill the Lily, we probably. We probably should. Yeah, it wasn't really doing a ton this game anyway, so that's fine. Opponent passes. We draw land. Hit the lily. Ooh. All right. We got rid of the... We got rid of the shield rid, but now we can't kill the lily. 
I mean, I guess we can... Yeah. I guess we'll keep animation module. I think we're just gonna play the land and then <clears throat> we'll just bolt in response. Unfortunately, we probably just gotta bolt the lily or else it's gonna ultimate. Yeah, let's get rid of the lily or hit the lily. I wish you could get rid of it. Lily back down to one or two rather. Bellmaster hits us down to 16. Opponent gonna make a shuffle. Yeah, his field of ruin effects have been actually like oddly effective at just changing the top card of our deck well that's our last basic if they find another one strip mines achieved land go are we taking up the lily looks like maybe not pony hits us down to 15. sure wow all right takes it up eh, it was just a dark ritual well let's thin the deck honestly i'm not sure how we get out of this though we have zero combo pieces if we draw a creature, Lily gets it. The only saving grace is we're not currently on a fast clock. So we have a little bit of time. Even at this point, if they level all the way up in Ultimate Liliana, <clears throat> I don't know if it actually matters. <laughs> like, it'd be annoying, but we've just drawn so many lands this game that we can still kind of just play magic. Bowmasters can snipe the Bowmasters and then, ooh, take Numa. Huh, what is this getting? Bowmasters or, oh, is it Shieldred? Oh, okay, that's not great. There's a shield red. The problem is they can flip it next turn and we definitely are not gonna beat a flip shield red. That's, flip shield red is GG. We just, we can't get it off the battlefield and we can't beat what it does. Not the right time for thought sees. Uh, 11 cards in the, yeah, 11 cards. Yeah, we're just done. They can just flip it and we can't stop it. That went a little worse. That went a little worse, but let's run it back. We are on the play for game number three. That game, our opponent uh, kind of picked us apart. Maybe we need them to draw more one rings. It is funny that the game we won is the one where our opponent drew three one rings. That game that we lost, our opponent <laughs> drew, I guess they drew one and we thought seized it, but they played zero one rings. Maybe that's the secret. We need our opponent to play more One Rings. Game three, please read our crime novel infinitely. Uh, yeah, we'll play first. Well, so this is one of those weird burn hands. Shieldred's Edict is nice. That is a way that we can deal with like a Shieldred potentially or a Lily that otherwise, as we saw last game, kind of tough for a deck to deal with. Going to six. Well, tap land, go. Opponent land. Goblin Bombardment's nice. The games when we have Goblin Bombardment tend to go much better when, than the games when we don't. I think in some ways it might be just the most important card in our deck. Yeah, we would have kind of liked to hit a land there. Yeah, let's let's pass. I think there's some argument for playing animation module just because we've seen a bunch of thought seizes and even duress. Ooh, they have a bowmaster, don't they? I'm pretty sure they have a bowmaster, but <laughs> If you think your opponent has a Bowmaster, you don't really want to be the first one to Bowmaster. So I don't think we are going to Bowmaster either. All right, let's Shambling Ghast. If our opponent Bowmaster is that, that's pretty fine. And let's get down the module before it gets discarded. Do they have a Bowmaster? Were we correct? You can actually... I might have to do a video on this sometime. Oh, it's a long goodbye, not a Bowmaster. I think an interesting video would be... What you can learn about where your opponent hovers their mouse on Magic Arena, you can actually gather a lot of information just based on what your opponent's lighting up. That's something I've actually consciously started to realize is like, if I got an important thing going on or my opponent has something on board and I'm worried about it, I try not to hover on it because I'm afraid my opponent's gonna see me hovering and they're gonna think about it. So I think there's actually like a whole psychology because you can see what lights up with your opponent hovering. I think there's a whole psychology behind what you can learn from that, what you should and shouldn't do with your mouse to like give away information. I think that's a, an untapped, an untapped aspect of magic that people don't think as much about as they should on Arena. Well, opponent is on the clock. Yargle, your time is ticking down. I still think, I mean, they still could have a Bowmaster right it's not impossible it does seem more obvious to bowmaster instead of spend the real removal all right there's a one ring I'm gonna do this again uh-huh found it one rings yeah yeah sure we actually have a lot of points of damage of burn 
and our opponent's getting one ranked. And we don't have to really worry about March because we have the Goblin Bombardment to sack stuff. I guess they could march their own creature, but this might be another weird burn game. This deck is so, it's so weird. It wins a two way. Like, obviously the goal is to Crime Novelist combo. That's why we're playing the deck. But we've also got a couple of just like, draw a bunch of bolts and bowmasters and like piece together this like super weird goblin bombardment burn <laughs> plan <laughs> bound at land and well one ring we're gonna flash in the bowmasters if our opponent has the bowmasters i'm pretty sure it's about to come down okay so i think our opponent did have the bowmasters i think they actually did have it so they're gonna bowmaster our bowmaster so we can sack the bowmaster in response to fizzle their activation so this keeps our opponent from getting the orc army i guess bowmaster isn't really that good against us is it once it's on the battlefield because it's not like we're really drawing extra cards we're not playing one rings or anything plus if we have to kill it we know we sack the the orc Ooh, yeah i would like to make the synergy between animation module and orcish bowmaster has actually been one of the surprise parts of this deck oh uh don't name lightning bolt <laughs> hopefully actually if they name lightning bolt maybe it's fine because we get a bunch of bodies but that would be awkward i imagine they're just gonna snipe a combo piece like if they want to make sure we can't combo i guess you go crime novelist since we already have the other two pieces on the battlefield so that might be what they do is just go crime novelist here uh, opponent uh so that means we are fully in on the janky burn plan. Let's get rid of the Bowmaster. So our opponent's at 16. They're taking one ring damage. How close are we to winning? So we actually have to think about this. So opponent goes to 15. Opponent goes to 13. We can bolt, bolt, bolt. All right, opponent plays Shieldred. Wait, do we, does this mean we win? So this is non-token, so it doesn't actually hit the orc. So we ping our opponent down to 12. We bolt, bolt, bolt down to down to three and then the one ring i think this works so we hit our opponent to 10. we could also diabolic edict for another lightning bolt well okay thought sees you this makes sure there's no like march or something opponent has fatal push so i guess we can't quite kill our opponent here we can put our opponent to one with the one ring all right, their hand's just two removal spells. If they activate the one ring, we win. And they might, because, well, no, they know about the bolts, so they, well, who knows? <laughs> who knows with the Yargle? Yargle, wow. Okay, bolt you. Wait, so this means our opponent has to draw into March to march their own Shieldred? Or they just die to the one ring, right? Bolt you, bolt you. Down to three. The one ring now has three counters. And there is a, there is a, wow, wow, okay. Well, we didn't get the combo kill that last game, but uh, we beat a one ring. I don't know what our opponent was thinking. Ah, we're not going to think about it. We will just take the win. Enjoy our beautiful crime novel. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good book it's a good book i promise <laughs> you'll enjoy it uh, but we can talk about that in the wrap up so what do we learn this week about writing a timeless crime novel and overall we went three and four with the deck which eh, that's fine for a rogue brew i will say the deck played pretty well and it felt pretty fun and i like playing it the combo itself though was kind of weird like we did have some games where we just kind of rolled into it and it was awesome but it's actually kind of a lot of pieces to get set up and one of them especially crime novelist is kind of fragile it dies to bolt it dies to fatal push with a revolt all the other removal spells on holy heats and stuff so that was kind of the challenge of the deck the odd part of the deck is we actually got a couple of wins fairly without the combo like just beating down with shambling gas and sacrificing stuff to our goblin bombardments and maybe a bowmaster and maybe some lightning bolts so it is possible to win fairly but this is definitely a deck that it's more synergy than power and we ran into that in some of our losses where we saw some decks that are just like okay i'm just gonna you know show and tell in atroxa on turn three can you beat it i'm just gonna you know draw a ton of cards with treasure crews and play my luruses and whatever can you actually beat it our deck is more like I'm going to play all these like synergistic pieces and try to get this puzzle set up. And if I do, you better look out because it's going to be really sweet. But when it doesn't work out that way, the deck can feel a little underpowered at times. So I would say crime novelist combo. 
uh, not truly competitive, definitely more semi-competitive than truly competitive, but it is a pretty interesting deck, and it's got some neat synergies, and it was really fun to see Crime Novelist actually do some work, and I still think that Crime Novelist, in one form or another, it definitely has potential to be a powerful card in older formats in Magic, in Timeless, in Modern, maybe in Legacy, formats like that, because it is a very abusable ability, it's just hard to find the right pieces to go fully infinite with it. Another possibility for this card, and our deck didn't do this very well so in this deck we're definitely a combo deck like if we're not doing the combo crime novelist one of the worst cards in our deck if we're comboing crime novelist one of the best cards in our deck i am interested in the possibility of trying to build a deck where crime novelist can be used kind of fairly maybe you make a bunch of uh, treasures or food or clues or something and you're just like sacrifice them and grow it and make some mana and try to like just grow a big crime novelist and have this big value turn. so i think there's definitely potential there but for now i would say our crime novel maybe not on the best seller list but a fairly good read in general so that is crime novelist combo for timeless that's better deck for today thanks for watching everyone i hope you enjoyed it and i will talk to you soon